Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming February of 2018 regional auction. Now, today's rifle here is an answer to the question of, or the dilemma of, I really would like to have a Soviet World War II submachine gun, but Soviet World War II submachine guns are expensive and depending on where I live, legally prohibited, or at least heavily restricted, and they're loud, and they cost a lot to shoot, and I want something that's a Soviet submachine gun, but it's a lot easier. This is Pieta's PPS-50, and it is a 22 rimfire, semi-automatic, mostly sort of look-alike, of a Soviet PPS-H-41. Pieta started making these things in, as far as I can tell, like 1976. They still make them today. They have gone through like a dozen different importers into the US. You know, companies come and go, and they, you know, they set up to import guns from various places, and you have a lot of options of what's being manufactured outside the United States that you think would sell well inside the United States, and a military sort of looking, and yet easy to own and cheap to shoot, and very pleasant to shoot 22 is kind of a perpetual popular item uh, in the American commercial market. So import companies come and go. The PPS-50 has stayed around. Uh, a lot of times this is known as a Squires Bingham PPS-50, because uh, that company was one of the early importers, and they kind of got their name associated with it. Uh, they're in fact the ones who imported this particular one. So, so this is manufactured by Pieta, and catalog number, made in Italy. Yes, that's the same Pieta that makes all of the Old West reproduction revolvers, lever-action rifles. Pieta does quite a lot. They're one of those companies that they may not make anything that's like super exciting or revolutionary, but they have a good stable of popular uh, firearms that they've gotten pretty good at making, and uh, it's a stable, reliable business. On the back here we have the model designations. Uh, Bingham Limited of Atlanta was the importer, and this is the PPS-50. So the importer names and the trade names up here change, but this remains Pieta's PPS-50 uh, model rifle. It is caliber 22 rimfire. We have some Italian proof marks and a serial number there. It is of course US and foreign patents applied for, blah blah blah. Now if we look at the features, you'll see that some things are vaguely military-ish and some are not. The front sight is not. That's actually a, a reasonably decent large square front post from a set of very much commercial sights. And there's the rear sight right off of something you would expect on a, an inexpensive commercial 22. So it's a little uh, open notch rear sight. It folds down if you want to replace it with something else, I guess. Once it's folded down you have no sights, so I would leave it up. The safety is very much like a commercial little 22. Uh, forward is fire, backward is safe. This is semi-automatic only, fires from a closed bolt, and it's just a simple blowback. Uh, well, it is a 22. There really doesn't need to be anything more complicated to it than that. There is one interesting little element, and that is this upward curve at the end of the bolt's track, and that acts in conjunction with a little extra buffer spring at the back of the receiver to make sure that this doesn't batter itself when it's shooting. So at the end of travel the bolt does rotate slightly up, and that's going to dampen uh, whatever remaining energy it has at that point. Now on a real Papa Shaw, the barrel jacket is square. On this one it's round, because that's what made sense with a round receiver and a round bolt, and just for manufacturing purposes. Uh, and the styles change a bit. So I think the ones that they're currently producing have oval-shaped vent holes instead of these round holes. Um, that's the sort of thing that just... Uh, uh, changes from time to time when, when a gun's been in production for close to 50 years now. There's a front sling swivel that's pretty much a commercial sling swivel. Kind of neat though that the rear sling attachment is actually very much like an, a Papa Shaw 41. Uh, it's a sling bar inletted into the stock, and someone has put on a Russian style submachine gun type sling here. So that's a neat little addition. This hook in the front of the trigger guard is the magazine release. And that brings us to the main reason, I think, why most people buy a PPS-50, which is the 50-round drum magazine. So this does come with other magazines if you'd like. Uh, in fact, I think they generally charge a premium for the drum, but virtually everybody gets the drum, because without the drum it doesn't have that Soviet World War II look. Uh, they have 30 and 10-round stick magazines as well. 
However, um, to the as far as I'm able to understand, the drum is actually pretty darn well designed and pretty reliable. So one of the cool things is we can take it apart and I can show you the inside. I've loosened the screw a bit. So we just take this screw out and then the back plate lifts off. This is kind of like a, uh, a Suomi or a, well, a Papa Shaw drum where the back comes off. However, you don't have to do this to load. They do make a little loading tool and you can load it through the top. If you do look inside though, you will find this plastic uh, wheel. Uh, worth pointing out that the vast majority of the space in this drum is not used at all. Uh, it is this size simply to fit a circumference of 50 cartridges. And then what makes it actually run are three dummies at the top. So these dummy cartridges are held together by a little rubber piece, which is one of the weak points of the gun that can get old and brittle and break. And when they get to the end, those three feed up into the feed tower just like regular cartridges. See them feeding up like that. And that means that there's something still pushing on the last cartridge in the drum, even though you haven't had a real cartridge available for a couple rounds. By the way, pro tip, if you are shooting one of these and you have a malfunction at the end of the magazine, uh, be, be careful when you clear it because if that rubber piece has broken and one of these dummy cartridges has gotten chambered in your rifle, uh, you do stand a good chance of losing it if you're not paying attention. And if you lose it, the drum doesn't really work so well. So you need all three of those. The other cool little detail to notice in this drum is I'm holding the drum square on and if you look you can see that the two, the front and the back plate, these plastic plates, don't appear to be in line with each other. And that's not because of poor quality control, that's very deliberate. You can see if I tilt the drum a little bit those line up. Because the 22 rim fire is a rimmed cartridge, you need to do something to avoid rim lock. And so what they do is actually take the cartridges and cant them each just at a slight angle so that the rims don't interfere in particular once they start feeding up into the tower. Uh, that is definitely going to be one of the elements that makes this a more reliable drum magazine than many others. So there you go. That's the angle that they are put in at and that's square onto the drum. Sorry, I don't have any dummy 22s or I would show them to you. There we go. So if your collection is in need of something that's uh, sort of military style, but just cheap and easy and affordable and fun to shoot, you know what? There's a reason that things like this have remained popular for so long. They're really not bad little guns. Uh, a lot of military collector types will look down their noses at them because they have absolutely no military provenance. They just are vague lookalikes. But you know what? They're still fun to shoot. So if you're interested in this one, it is part of a batch with several other rifles. If you take a look at the description text below, you'll find a link to Rock Island's catalog page covering the entire lot. You can see their price estimate, their pictures, the other guns that are in the lot, all that sort of stuff. And if you're interested, you can even place a bid on them right through Rock Island's website. Thanks for watching.